Up for day, the Committee on Health, Land, Justice and Culture is now called to order. Today's Friday, June 4, 2021. The time is 3.04 p.m. Notices for this virtual public hearing were disseminated via email to all senators and all main media broadcasting outlets on Thursday, May 27, and again on Wednesday, June 2, 2021. Notice was also published in the Guam Daily Post on those same days. Virtu this virtual hearing is hosted by the Guam Legislature's AV staff and my committee staff. I thank them for their assistance. The host will mute all Zoom participants until called upon by the chair. Individuals testifying shall first be recognized by the chair before speaking. When called to speak, please ensure that your audio and video are unmuted and begin by stating your name for record keeping purposes. We have one, only one agenda item, that is bill number 113-36-COR. I'd like to thank my colleagues who joined me today, beginning with the sponsor, Senator James Moylan and Senator Tello Taitigui. Thank you, Senators, for being here. I will now ask Senator Moylan to please introduce the bill, including the title. Oh, Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm sorry, if I could also recognize Senator Joanne Brown has also joined us. Now I'll allow Senator Moylan, please introduce the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. So bill number 113-36 is an act, uh, or actually introduced by myself and co-sponsored by Senator Tina Rose Munya Barnes. And this is an act to add subsection 61541B4 and subsection 61541C4 to sub-articles five of chapter 61, title 21, of the Guam Code annotated. This is relative to establishing guidelines for off-premise signs on commercial and industrial zones. So the off-premise signs by definition are signs promoting a person, place or thing, even activities not located on the premise. An example of an off-premise signs is signs on a building exterior walls advertising a particular product that is not being sold inside that building, like advertising beverages on the side of an office building where none of the tenants sell the beverage. That's what off-premise signs are about. And when it comes to off-premise signs, specifically for commercial and industrial zones, our statues are really behind the times. Uh, well, we do have off-premise signs, which has mandates in the Guam Code annotated permitting off-premise signs, which regulates the measurements of the sign and other safety requirements. And the enforceable agency is the Department of Public Works. However, again, these mandates hasn't kept up with how the marketing medias have evolved on a global basis. And this is why the objective of this act is to allow for additional commerce, which would generate new tax revenue, create jobs and allow for additional economic activity by updating guidelines for off-premise signs on commercial and industrial zones. Off-premise signs are necessary for advertising, which is a must to promote business goods, activities or services, and regulated off-premise signs are an effective means to get the message to potential consumers. So with the passage of this act and moving it forward, it allows those with land and commercial and industrial zones to consider renting advertising signs to generate income. This act also ensures Department of Public Works is the enforceable agency starting from the application review and citing any violators, whereby ensuring residents and visitors alike continue to enjoy the beauty of our island. Thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to introduce this bill. Thank you, Senator Moylan. I'd also like to introduce uh, or acknowledge the presence of Senator Bloss. Thank you, Senator, for joining us. And Mayor Louise Rivera, the mayor of Timuning, Tumon, Harmon. Thank you, Mayor. All right, we will proceed now with uh, testimony from those who've signed up, to, uh, beginning with Benson Ayung. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, Senator Taitigui, Senator Blas, Senator uh, Joanne Brown. I know I saw her name here earlier. Um, and um, 
Uh, hope I didn't miss anybody in the in mayor, uh, Rivera and everybody else. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Benson Aoyang. Thank you for the opportunity to present my testimony. Um, a little bit of history of myself. Uh, I lived in Guam for over 40 years. I've been attending cathedral. I went to Bishop and then I finally graduated Father Duenas. I also went to college, University of Hawaii at Manoa and then and uh, eventually returned to working in Guam. I'm here representing my advertising company called Cube Inc. Um, our only source of income is the static banner and they sign it up for two months near the intersection next to the Nissan Automotors. I'm here in support of Bill 113-36. Because we often hear from a governor pushing to diversify our economy with new industry from all finding companies such as space launching, high wealth uh, from Asia, ship repair, save heaven, et cetera. But lately, but locally, uh, we also have an industry like Cube Inc. Billboard, which bring revenue from off-island advertisers. And that's, that is why we, we support Bill 113-36, which in turn will create jobs, contribute to Guam's economy, promote business, beautify the surrounding area, use of land that otherwise may not be rentable, but most importantly, to regulate the off-premises signage. This bill does not only help Guam's economy with advertising companies such as myself, but it also sets a skyline for all, uh, all off-premises signage. Whether this bill passed or not, off-premises signs are already everywhere. You can drive around and, and see them. It's vital to it is vital to promote one's business and product. And if this bill passed, it will set the guidelines and find those who are in the violations. Now, if it doesn't pass, well, you know, I live on Guam for 40 plus years. I call Guam my home. And I would not want Guam to look like some Asian country with like the jungle of signage. So if it, do if it doesn't pass, Guam might turn into a jungle of signage with no guidelines. So I'm here today to ask the legislative body to support such guidelines to control the off-premises signage, not just for company products, but for stuff like um, concerts or fundraisers or even big events, which sometimes leaves the abandoned signage years after that is over. Um, thank you, I appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, I'm willing to uh, take some questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Aoyoung. I'd also like to recognize the presence of Senator Tony Ada. So again, we have with us Senators Moylan, Taitaguis, Brown, Bloss, and Ada. We'll now hear from Bobby Sajdiv. And well, we have three people signed up from TriVision Media, Bobby Sajdiv, Christopher Morado, and Doyon Morado. If you could clarify if, if one of you will be testifying or all of you. Okay. All right, please state your name for the record, Christopher. Uh, my name is uh, Christopher Morado. Please proceed. Okay, thank you. Half a day and good afternoon, all you senators. My name is Christopher Morado. And on behalf of my partners, Bobby Sashtev and Matthew Beck and our company, TriVision Media Group, I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to testify before you this afternoon in support of the efforts put forth by Senator James Moylan and Tina Munoz Barnes with this bill number 113-36. Although we do applaud the efforts put forth, we cannot support this bill 113-36 as written. We do recommend many changes and additions to the bill that would not only benefit this industry as a whole, but, but more importantly, benefit and protect our island and its people. Our company, TriVision Media Group, has been and continues to be a member of the off-premise outdoor advertising industry here on Guam for over four, uh, 17 years. We own and operate our electronic displays located at the Camacho building in front of the Coast 360 Bank in Tamuni, as well as the display located in Tumon in front of the VIP and Churrasco restaurants. I'd like to submit as part of our testimony here today, a list of our concerns and recommendations. This document will include some technical amendments that we kindly ask the committee to consider implementing as we move forward with drafting this comprehensive addition to the sign law. 
It will also include some er uh, ideas and concepts that are of concern to our, to our business, our industry, and to the island community as a whole. At this time, I'd like to mention a few of our ideas and recommendations. Number one, this bill only allows for static signs and discriminates against new technology by not allowing digital signage. TriVision Media Group, along with the majority of off-premise outdoor advertising companies that do business here on Guam for over 17 years, utilize the newest technology available in our market. We use modern digital displays to showcase our clients' advertisements, as well as public service announcements for our government agencies and nonprofit organizations. By only allowing for static signs, this bill will not benefit the industry as a whole. Instead, it will only benefit one company. Also, we as an industry throughout the entire world, including America, don't separate or differentiate digital displays from static displays. The simple fact is that digital displays are a form of static displays due to the fact that they do display static advertisements. Lastly, TriVision Media Group, along with the mass majority of the industry here in Guam that use digital displays have proven the effective, safe, responsible, and beneficial use of our technology to help and serve our customers as well as the public by showcasing products and services of private companies as well as public service announcements that benefit our government, community, and nonprofit organizations. There is no reason to exclude these companies from this bill and its benefits. Point number two, when it comes to off-premise outdoor advertising displays, size really does matter. If passed into law as is, Bill 113-36, would allow for 400 square foot signs throughout our beautiful island. Instead of the industry and safety standards of 200 square foot signs used by states and countries around the world. I'd now like to submit to you page 13 of the United States Sign Council's Sign Legibility Rules of Thumb. I'm not sure how, how, how to do that. Teresa, if you can uh, display page 13. Well, I'll go ahead and move on. I don't see it though. Okay. Um, Teresa, um, page 13 of the sign council's legibility rules of thumb, please. But I'll go ahead and move on. It, it'll be there, it's, it's in the documents. Uh, so this is a page 13 out of this, the US sign council's sign legibility rules of thumb, which is based on safety and visibility studies. This page clearly shows industry standards in terms of display size based on the rate of vehicular travel on roads on which these displays are built and operated. It clearly shows that due to the average rate of speed vehicles travel here on Guam, which is between 35 and 40 miles per hour on complex four lane roads, the maximum size of any type of display should not exceed 200 square feet. There are two main reasons for this limitation. Number one, it's been proven that 200 square foot displays are clearly legible while traveling at an average rate of 40 miles per hour, which is the average rate of travel here on Guam. Number two, roads with a speed limit of 35 to 45 miles per hour tend to have, tend to have many private businesses along those roads. Therefore, having displays larger than 200 square feet would significantly block these businesses on-premise signs that display their names, co company names, products, or services, making it harder to view com uh, company storefronts that guide people to their place of business. This causes a safety hazard simply due to the fact that people would have to spend more time eyes looking for the company's storefront instead of eyes on the road. This is a proven fact. Also, oversized giant 400 square foot displays would severely affect the aesthetic beauty alongside our island's roadways. Lastly, 
as shown on page 13 of this document, 400 square foot displays are only recommended for freeways where the rate of travel is 55 to 60 miles per hour. Again, there are reasons for this. Uh, Teresa, can you scroll down to page 13, please? This right now, it's on page five. It's on page five right now, so you can go to page 13. There you go. Okay. So you can see there that the average rate of travel of 40 miles per hour would entail 200 square foot uh, signs. Uh, again, last day as shown on page uh, 13 of this document, 400 square foot displays are only recommended for freeway freeways where the rate of travel is 50 to 60 miles per hour. Again, there are reasons for this. Freeways don't have storefronts alongside of them. Therefore, there's nothing to block, nothing for these large displays to block. Number two, when traveling at a rate of 55 or 60 miles per hour, displays must be legible from further away because of the higher rate of speed, therefore justifying their larger size. This is obviously not the case on Guam. Therefore, we should not allow for this overly huge size of billboards. Um, at, at this time, I'd like to uh, show you some examples because sometimes it's hard to visualize what a size, what size would look like in the real world, right? Where we're talking 200 square feet here, 400 square feet here. So we took it upon ourselves to do some mock-ups for you. Um, as you see on your screen now, the, on the bottom screen, you can see uh, Cherry Media Visions display uh, in front of the Docomo building or in front of Horse and Cow. Their display is currently 200 square feet, again, following industry standards and safety standards. Uh, the picture above shows a 400 square foot um, mock-up. Now, these, these renderings were done by an architect, so they are to scale. If you see, that sign is pretty big. Um, if, uh, I mean, in my opinion, it's, it's not conducive to the area in which it's, which it's at. Not only is it huge, but as you can see, it blocks the Docomo sign. You will now have customers looking for the Docomo building, having to look around that billboard. Again, taking eyes off the road. This is a safety factor that is a big concern for our industry. That's why I'd like to bring it up. That's why we mock these up. Uh, can we go ahead and scroll down? Now I'll show you another example here. Keep, keep going. Let's go to the Tamuning location. Okay, right there. Okay, so this is uh, our sign, TriVision Media Group sign at the ITC intersection. Our sign is, as, as a matter of fact, is smaller than 200 square feet. I believe it's, what, what is it, one, 130, one, 130 square feet, something like that. And you can kind of see it there in the background, that gray border. Uh, that, that is actually our display there. Now, we chose that size for that location because, again, it's more aesthetically pleasing. And we, we're very concerned. That, that's the business that we're in. We're in the business of aesthetics, right? And we show advertisements. So we didn't want to clutter that area. But we used the dimensions of our screen to mock up a 200 square foot sign mock up there. So if you see, that's what a 200 square foot sign would look like at the ITC intersection. Teresa, can you go ahead and scroll down? Right there. Now that is a 400 square foot giant billboard at that location. If you can see, it's really, really big, uh, not conducive again to the, to, the, to the area in which it's in and also literally blocks 50% of the building behind it. So not only is it a safety hazard for people looking for storefronts because they're blocked by these giant signs, but also you have corporations and businesses that built their buildings and have their storefront signs up there that will start complaining, perhaps even start suing people because their signs are being blocked. And this is why the, 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 the states and world, worldwide regulate these signs based on the rate of travel because these streets do have uh, companies and businesses alongside the side of them. So our recommendation is for this bill to follow the industry and safety standards that have been implemented and proven not only throughout the US but also here on Guam. Our third point, 
If passed as is, Bill 113-36 would allow for 400 square foot displays to be built and operated every 500 feet along Guam's roadways. Due to the obvious fact that Guam must safeguard our island's amazing beauty for, for our people and our tourism industry, we believe that having 400 square foot billboards every 500 feet alongside our roadways would have a huge detrimental effect on the beauty, feel, culture of our island. And of course, this would negatively affect our tourism industry because our visitors come here to enjoy our culture, the sun and sand, and of course, the inherent beauty of our island. As a visual example, I'd like to ask you to try to visualize Cherry Media sign in front of the Docomo uh, building. Now visualize Trivision sign at the ITC intersection. The distance between those two signs is 3,000 feet. If this bill is passed as is, there could potentially be six 400, giant, 400 square foot giant billboards along, alongside that short span of roadway. Now also visualize the TriVision sign at the Tumuni ITC intersection and the Vantage sign over at the airport road mobile. That's roughly also 3,000 feet. Again, potentially having three giant 400 square foot billboards along that short side of, uh, of, of road. Combined, you've got 6,000 feet of roadway that potentially can have 12 of these giant 400 square foot signs installed. So we, we recommend that this bill is changed to allow for 200 square foot displays every 3,500 feet instead of 500 feet. This will significantly reduce the amount of advertising displays along our roadways by seven times, thereby protecting our island's beauty while also allowing for the benefit of off-premise outdoor advertising. Also, we, along with the majority of our industry here on Guam, feel that this 3,500 foot requirement is not only re reasonable and responsible, but crucial to the success of our industry and our, and our beautiful island. Our fourth point, the minimum distance from intersections should be consistent with federal guidelines. We recommend that a section be added to the bill so, so that the minimum number of feet from an intersection that a display sign can be erected is consistent with the existing federal guidelines. Under those guidelines, according to DPW, the appropriate distance from an intersection with a stoplight is 100 feet. This bill lacks that section. And we recommend that that, that be put in there. Now, that concludes my main points and recommendations we have. Now I'd like to kind of briefly touch upon several key topics that should also be addressed in this bill. Number one, brightness and illumination restrictions and regulations. Any out, out of home advertising billboard or display will need some kind of illumination in, in order for it to be visible to the public. Whether it be a digital display where the illumination comes from its own face with LED light bulbs, that need to be regulated. That brightness level must be regulated. Or a static billboard or a static uh, sign or banner that is lit by a spotlight or several spotlights that illuminate the sign face in order for it to be visible. Even those have to be regulated. Because as we all know, you can put a, a, a really, really bright light pointing at a, a uh, banner display that's color white, let's say, and it would reflect off into the traffic, which would cause an extreme safety hazard for our public. So brightness and illumination needs to be regulated in any bill considering off-premise advertising. Second point, due to the lack of funding that DPW has to enforce the current, current or future sign laws, we recommend increasing the permit, per, permitting fees of these off-premise advertising signs. The current fee is $150. Com our, our companies make upwards of $500,000 per month per ad. In, uh, in order to safeguard our community and island, DPW must be able to enforce the sign laws. And as we all know, per as we, we know personally, 
Every time we submit a package to DPW with a list of pictures of illegal signs, the answers we always get is that they don't have the manpower or the funding to enforce the law. A $150 permit fee will not help alleviate this challenge. Therefore, we recommend the fees be increased to 400, perhaps $1,000 per permit. Number three, as this bill allows for off-premise advertising signs, it should also define what prohibited off-premise uh, signs are, such as temporary signs or signs that look like official government signs, like a stop, light, stop sign, but really aren't, or signs that are placed on private property that is not authorized by the owner, or portable signs that can be transported anywhere that uh, uh, the, the user may want. And last point is a maintenance and repair standards section must be adhered to. As we, hear, as we all here know and have seen our, ourselves, banners, temporary signs, and static signs throughout our island have been left in place even after its effective use. Allowed to dilapidate, these static signs not only cause visual pollution by ruining the beauty of our island and causing significant safety hazards, Therefore, we must regulate and maintain, we must regulate the maintenance and repair of such signs and displays. In closing, I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to testify regarding Bill 113-36. Thank you, Senator James Moylan and Senator Tina Munoz Barnes for undertaking this meaningful and necessary effort to update the sign laws. We kindly ask that you give our concerns and recommendations serious consideration and we stand willing and ready to aid the chair and the committee with any further industry research, information or resources that you might need. Thank you for your time and attention. If there's any questions you, you, you need to ask, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Murado. We'll now hear from Richard DeVera. Richard, can you turn on your video? Hi, I actually wasn't scheduled to um, testify. I was just here to uh, listen to um, Chris Morato's um, testimonial. Okay, all right then, thank you. Uh, thank you. Kiko Chrysostomo? Good afternoon, Senators. Um, I'd like to go ahead and uh, read a testimony from Mr. Tae O, oh, the president of Vantage Advertising, he's unable to be here right now, so I'm going to read his testimony for him. Off of day, Senator Moylan, we would like to express our deep gratitude for your assistance in advocating for Bill 113-36. As members of the local business community, we strongly recommend a few suggestions that may better serve the community. We would like to point out a few concerns of Bill 113-36, most specifically the following. Uh, the first one is minimum distance between signs. A minimum distance of 500 feet would mean the length of Tumon would be cluttered with over 28 signs on each side of the street for a total of 56 static signs. We feel a distance of 500 feet could allow signs to become excessive and overwhelming as it would certainly be allowed to clutter the island. Number two, minimum distance of 100 feet from the intersections. We recommend a minimum distance of 100 feet from an intersection. This will, this will give appropriate distance from a stoplight and prevent from any driving hazards. And the third point would be maximize size of the, maximum size of the sign face. To prevent blockage of line of sight, we recommend the face size of the static sign should not exceed 200 square feet or more. Any bigger would be hazardous and detrimental to the traffic flow. Again, we would like to, we would like a responsible passage of Bill 113-36. Not only can we then move forward in enforcing a law that will benefit the community, but also our local government and future business sign owners. Thank you for your time, Senator Moylan, and please feel free to contact us at any time should you have any questions. Again, that's from Tae O, oh, the president of Vantage Advertising. All right, thank you, Mr. Chrysostomo. Mayor Rivera, would you like to present testimony?
All right, Mayor, if you can hear me, let me know if you would like to present testimony. I'm in the meantime, I'm going to move on. I hope I didn't miss anybody. Okay, so um, we did receive a fiscal note on the bill. BBMR says uh, enactment of this bill would will pose a fiscal impact in terms of additional signage revenues generated in terms of civil penalties imposed by DPW for off-premise sign violations occurring in both commercial and industrial zones. These signage revenues will be deposited into the Public Signage Enforcement Fund. The Bureau is unable to provide any financial information on the Public Signage Enforcement Fund as it has yet to be established by DPW. As reflected on the attachment to the bill for revenue generating measures, the Bureau provides an estimated potential impact of the proposed measure should there be a total of one, three, or five violations and civil penalties imposed and should late by late action civil penalties be added and recovered per month by DPW for either or a combination of both commercial or industrial zones. So they put a table here of if the civil penalty per violation is $1,000, you have five, uh, five violations per month. Um, if you have three per month or five per month, I don't know. So they put some estimates of how much we would re receive in penalty income, re penalty revenue. We also received um, comment from the legal bureau. She says that both section 6154B4 and C4 provide that an off-premise sign shall be a static sign pursuant to the definition in this chapter. However, there is no definition of static sign in chapter 61. So legal recommends providing a definition of static sign or deleting pursuant to the definition in this chapter. All right, Mayor, I see you there. Would you like to prevent, uh, present testimony? Um, well, yes, oh, I'm, I'm just here attending this public hearing to listen to um, all sides I know that um, there has been no objection um, so far that has come out. Um, we did have our municipal planning council meeting last night. And, um, you know, with, you know, the discussion that we have is uh, we're not here to uh, approve or disapprove. But um, as I mentioned, there is no objection um, so far that has come out in regards to this bill. And also that, um, you know, um, the, whole, the whole fact that we do need regulations and enforcement. So, you know, um, um, you know so far, uh, again, I am listening to everyone's testimony and um, we'll bring it before the council, um, you know, to let them know, um, you know, what, uh, what was being said and um, for discussion so that we can have a written testimony sent in to you. All right. Okay. Thank, okay, you. thank you very much, Mayor. Um, I have testimony. Just one second here. So we received written testimony from Director Ariola from DPW. It's very short, so I'm just going to read it very quickly. It says, um, sorry, that's my letter to him. All right, uh, if I could ask my staff, Teresa, could you please or uh, read the director's testimony? Hi, hey, Speaker. Okay, one moment. It, it's in an, e an email that was sent today, and it states, um, Hapade Speaker Terlahi, thank you for the invitation to testify on bill number 113-36. We are still researching issues related to the intent of the bill to include legal issues, conformance with federal highway standards and the manual on uniform traffic control devices for streets and highways, engineering, is um, engineering issues, structural soundness, materials to be used, sign design, et cetera, zoning and rights of way issues. The agency will submit testimony by early next week. Thank you for your understanding. 
respectfully, um, Vincent Ariola, DPW Director. Thank you. I had also sent a letter in preparation for this hearing to the director asking him about sign violations and if he could provide a list of the violations, the dates, the penalties imposed, status of signage removal as applicable. And I asked him to go back as far as their records could show, but in particular to um, prioritize information in the last two years. Um, his informal response to me was that um, sign enforcement is really one of the lower priorities of DPW right now, especially, and um, but that he would look and get me any information available. All right. So if I may, Senator Moreland, did you have any questions uh, for any of the panel? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I do appreciate all the panel's uh, information there and it's very helpful, very knowledgeable and uh, we will take that into consideration. But uh, let me, uh, maybe I can just ask a couple of questions to Mr. Ayong there. Uh, and some concerns have been brought up about the uh, 500 feet uh, distance between the billboards and our, is there a standard for all billboards? If you have any information on that, please. Well, um, <clears throat> um, yes, there is a standard for static billboard, which is what this bill is referring to, um, but not so for other changeable billboard and it could be uh, far further apart. Um, first of all, you know, we need to define the difference between the different types of billboard. Here in the, the traditional billboards are the large banner billboard, which is referred to the static billboard. I know that maybe we need a definition for the bill, but then there's a changeable ones. There's ones that is a, a trifold, which is a, like this. You can change up to three different pictures on the, on the billboard. There's one that scroll and uh, it can change the, the picture on the billboard as well. And of course, there's the newer one that the digital billboards that you know you've seen you, you've been seeing it around that, that can be changed electronically. Now most of the people they look at billboards are just all billboards and they, but what they don't know is that they all be regulated differently in the mainland. For example, to for example of something like that would be like you know a, a vehicle, right? You know your 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 car is a vehicle and an 18 wheeler is a vehicle, but do they have the same permits and licensing and regulation? Of course not. Uh, or your pleasure boat uh, compared to a cruise liner, they're both uh, vessels, but you know, obviously they're not uh, uh, have the same regulation, even though they're uh, the same vessels. So billboards are all regulated differently. Not all billboards are the same. Now, and I appreciate Chris for bringing the, um, uh, you know, the information from the United States uh, Sign Council. And I've seen this before. I've been on the sign business over 30, actually we're celebrating 32 years this year. Um, so I think the name of the, the documents that he presented is exactly what it is. It's sign legibility rule of thumbs. What it does is that um, when a customer comes to me and asks me, hey, uh, Benson, I want to make a sign, you know, four feet by eight feet. And um, how big should I make the letters so that people can see it visibly from the road? at the speed that they're driving. This is what the document is for, is to give a rule of thumb as to how big the letters would be, to be in order for you to make the sign so be legible for your customer that's driving by. But by no means it is the rules or federal regulations or state regulations uh, of um, our premises sign. It just tells you how big, you how big a letter you need to see when, when you're driving up. So, Senator, so to understand the different regulations for the for static sign is that um, the best way to do it is that we look into other part of the United States what the sign rules is. So I have uh, compiled a list of um, sign laws from every state in the United States of what they do, uh, or what the sign regulations are for both federal highway uh, administration regulations from the Department of Transportation 
as well as the state regulations of what the sign law is currently for static signs. Um, <clears throat> and, um, and by no mean, and it's something that, uh, you know, Guam is gonna follow it just blindly or something like that. But um, I think it's more of a start of an understand what the general consensus is as far as the regulations by the US Federal Highway, as well as the state uh, regulations. Now, most of the state senators, the federal highway agreements spacing, I know that we talked about going back to what you said, uh, asking about spacing for a static sign, it's 500 feet on the interstate freeway primary. And then if it's not on a primary freeway, it's as close as 100 feet in a, inside the municipalities or 300 feet outside of it. So let's just take a look at um, a couple of places. Let's, let's take a look at some place uh, from the West Coast. This will be the Arizona. Okay, so from Arizona, and I'll read to you spacing. So the spacing is defined as the minimum distance from the other outside, from, from other outside advertising allowed to be act or those regulations on the same side of the freeway. Sorry, let me turn on my phone. Okay, let me, let me, uh, let me start again. This is the Arizona, um, Arizona agreement providing the regulations of outdoor advertising. And the space is it's, um, on the same side of the freeway, it's 500 feet apart. On the same side of a primary highway that is not a freeway, outside municipal limit is 300 feet. And if it's inside the limits, it's 100 feet. This is uh, this is something set in um, what is this November of 1971 and is still in effect currently by the Federal Highway Administration and also the um, directors of highway. I don't know if you can see it clearly. So those are some of the the basics more more solid rules to show the difference. Okay, here's another one. Let's look at the East Coast. So East Coast, um, so here's a uh, state of Georgia. State of Georgia written in 1972. The spacing for sign, it's interstate highway and freeway on the fine, uh, federal eight primary system, A, no two structures should be spaced less than 500 feet apart. And B, um, if it's outside the corporate limits of the municipalities, no two structures should be spaced less than 300 feet apart. And if it's within the corporate limits, no two structures should be spaced less than 100 feet apart. So I think that um, the bill that you presented, Senator, is very responsible because um, in, the, in the state, in the mainland, and I have all the, every state here, um, they could be as close as 100 feet apart, but this, your particular bill, I think is responsible because it's actually taking the maximum federal highway recommendation, which is the 500 feet apart. And for our island, I think that's uh, a, a reasonable distance. I know that, um, Chris have uh, shown some uh, uh, graphics about if you have a sign every 500 feet, that would look like, you know, so many signs, but honestly, I don't think that it's realistic number because not every property owner will want to have a sign in front of the property that blocks them. And, you know, I have approached building owners and it's actually really tough to find somebody who wants to have a sign that, which is true, that potentially, can be blocking the uh, the building. Um, I think um, even 50% of that is probably not a realistic number. However, I think the distance, it's um, relatively uh, close. And if I may, I wanna also add on to um, 
some comments about you know some of the other uh, items that was brought on. Um, for instance, um, that would be the the size of the billboard. Now, again, you have to think uh, uh, a car and an eighteen wheeler. You know, it's a di it's regulated differently. So for I'm talking strictly for standard billboard because this is what the bill is referred to, Senator. And um, so for and I, again. I'll refer to um, the U.S. federal highway standards and the state standards for the um, uh, the size of the um, uh, billboards. And actually, your bill uh, uh, depicts in the bill. It's actually much much smaller than what the United States uh, federal highway uh, recommendations uh, allowable size are in the mainland. Um, no, actually, no state in the mainland is that small. But for I think for Guam, I think it's reasonable because of the because of our size. Um, let's take a look at the um, California area. So in California area, this is pretty much a standard for most of the states that I've seen on on that you know for all in, in the mainland. The size of sign. Uh, shall not erect to be exceed the maximum of 1,200 square foot in California. In an area with a maximum of 25 feet tall and a maximum of 600 feet, including the border and trim, excluding the bait and uh, apron support and other structure uh, members. This was um, signed into law and still in effect 1968 by the uh, Director of Public Work and the Public Safety. I, I see that uh, you can see that in, um, I think we're, we're lucky now they zoom, you can put stuff up under the cameras, you can see it. Um, and so that is the largest size, um, but the, the smallest size that is allowed by federal uh, highway administration in the United States is in Minnesota. And their size of a sign, and let me read it to you, is in a business area outside the corporate limits, the maximum area of a sign phase, whether a sign phase or each phase of a back-to-back -back or V-shaped sign shall not exceed 750 square foot, including the barrier trims and uh, excluding the base and apron support and other structures members. But if it's within the corporate limits, the maximum area of a sign phase, where there's a single phase, each phase back-to-back uh, -back or V-shaped phase shall not exceed 1,000 square foot. So again, I, I, I applaud you, uh, Senator. I, I think you, your bill, it's very responsible that it uh, follows uh, less than the federal guidelines is set in the um, uh, US Highway Administration and also the each of the state uh, regulation as well, that is actually using the furthest uh, distance between sign, which is the 500 feet, and is much more reduced size compared to the smallest size allowable in a, in the state of Minnesota, 750. And to just to kind of depict reason that um, not all billboards are the same billboard, going back to Georgia, in the, in the state of Georgia, um, the, the size of the, um, in the state of Georgia, hold on a second, let me pull this up. The distance apart for the state of Georgia for the spacing for the uh, uh, sign, for static sign, as I mentioned, is 500 feet earlier. But for, the, for uh, any type of changeable, movable sign, such as uh, the tri trifold or rope scrolling or digital sign, it's actually 5,000 feet. So from 500 feet for static and 5,000 feet for digital. And that's one of the reasons why that um, uh, I, I mentioned that not all vehicles are same or not all ships are same and not all billboards are the same. Now, going back to just answering some of the um, uh, uh, questions earlier is that, um, um, that signs, you know, I mean, you know, are not to be set back 
I mean, to you know, uh, billboards should be set back 100 feet from the intersections. And that makes sense for digital billboards because the lights from the digital billboard, the pictures that is displayed on that could easily be inter interpreted as a street light where the intersections are. But if you talk about a static sign, which um, you can drive around right now today, um, gas stations, mom and pop store that is next to the intersections are, you know, closer than 100 feet, obviously. None of those are considered as an illegal sign or needs to be set back 100 feet because it's just a banner. Um, but if they have lights that are showing pictures, um, then obviously, you know, that could, uh, you know, uh, potentially be interpreted as a street sign because of the green lights and the, you know, red lights and the yellow lights. And, um, and I agree. I agree with Chris that those should be uh, uh, set back, but it's just that um, it, it should be set back for uh, different type of billboards. And, uh, and I think that that would be, um, that would be the responsible thing to do. Did I answer your question okay, Senator? Yes, thank, thank you, Mr. Young. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, thank you, Senator Moylan. If I could ask a couple of questions. Uh, so the bill says that um, uh, well, current law allows signs up to 40 square feet uh, on each space uh, normally and 12 feet in height in commercial and industrial zones. But this bill would, as discussed, um, allow up to 400 square feet in area on each face and shall not exceed 30 feet in height. And I wanted to know if you could give us an example of um, what that would look like. So do you believe that the, uh, Mr. Ayung, do you think that uh, the representation made by TriVision as to the 400 square feet is accurate? Um. Well, again, uh, referring back to the U.S. Highway Federal Administration uh, regulations, uh, the allowable size of the sign, the smallest one in the United States is 600 uh, or 750 square foot. Um, this bill is, uh, is at only asking for 400 uh, square foot. Now, I, I think the representation um, by the architect on the slide that was shown earlier, it's a little bit um, confusing, you know. Um, I think, um, first of all, um, let me just read to you uh, where the 30 feet comes from, because no matter if it were digital or static sign, uh, you, you are not, you know, no, nobody can build higher than 30 feet without uh, getting uh, some type of variance or something like that. So. Um, let me let me read to you the zoning law, current zoning law for height limit for established in an AR1, L2, R0, C, M1, M2 zone, no building or structure, okay, structure like a, a sign structure, shall be erected or maintained, nor shall any existing building or structure be altered, enlarged, moved, or maintained to exceed a height limit of three stories. The three stories shall not exceed the height of 30 feet except that the C zone within the new Agania lot and block system and building height shall, shall be six stories and a six story shall not be higher than 75 feet. So no structure, whether it is um, digital signs or static signs will be taller than um, 30 feet. And if you go and if you look at, um, uh, if I'm correctly, I mean, I've never really gone in and actually physically measured it, but, um, I, if I remember when they got the approval for um, uh, the one in front of Horst and Cow, um, and maybe Rich, Rich can uh, 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 give us some insight about that. I think that's relatively close to the 30 feet range, maybe 25, 30 feet. And so whether the billboard is 400 square foot or 200 square foot, it would not exceed the height of that in such a way that it, you know, uh, well, uh, block up somebody's sign or something like that, but um, it would it would um, come down a little bit more rather than going up even higher. So 30 feet is the limit for uh, the Guam zoning law. 
Right. Okay. But yeah, but this, um, this bill would increase um, regular signs, those that did not great get these exceptions made in prior laws, but the kind of regular signs would our maximum, it looks to me like a percentage of, you know, the face of the building or um, 12 feet in height in commercial and industrial zones. And it would change that from 12 feet to 30 feet in height. And so I just wanted to get an idea. So that's, yeah, that's a, like a three-story building uh, maximum height, right? Well, uh, according to this bill, will be allowed. That's correct. But um, do not um, confuse um, this current uh, bill for off-premises signs, uh, static sign, with the existing, which is the on-premise static, uh, static sign. So, okay. Yeah, so what you're reading, the, um, the 10%, um, mm -hmm. 12 foot, and, um, uh, you know, um, yeah, the 10% the and 12 foot dimensions are for sign that is placed on the wall of the building for on-premises sign. That, that's the right. difference. Right. Well, that's my point, too. Uh, so we, you know, for regular signs, on-premise signs, meaning you are advertising what's in that building Correct. on those premises. Uh, we restrict those property owners to signs that are 10% um, of the, the wall or 12 feet in height. But for these off-premise signs, we are being asked to, you know, allow much larger, 30 feet in height, 400 square feet. And, um, okay, and so now we know that uh, based on earlier presentation today that uh, some of the digital signs we are looking at are about, 200 square feet, right? So double yes. double those even, yeah. And um, but we do have an existing example of a 400 square feet sign, do we? Um, you, you want, um, I'm not prepared with the picture right now. I don't know if I can pull it up right away. <laughs> oh, okay, no, I think I have one. Well. Is, is the current sign that um, your company owns, is that 400 square feet? That is correct. Okay, and the, the bill would allow 400 square feet on each face and would allow up to four faces, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so if I, if I could just put up, um, I, I took some pictures, I, oh, my staff took some pictures and I, I would like to put up just that, Mm, not that one. The cube. This one, yes. yes. So this this is the one on the top of the hill, coming up from the west end up to Upper Tumon. Right. So uh, yeah, right along Upper Tumon. This is uh, four hundred square feet on one side, on one face. Right. Okay. All right then. And I know that this sign and the digital signs were all authorized by individual, you know, uh, another law that kind of made an exception after um, some land use commission actions. But uh, yeah, so those were the only signs allowed at that time that exceeded this on-premise sign restrictions. So these are the off-premise signs that have been allowed. Um, is it fair to say that all other off-premise signs that we are seeing are not allowed? What, well, would any of you be, really, be able to answer that? I was hoping that the Department of Public Works would be here to answer that, but uh, that, yeah. Oh, if we could take with, off the PowerPoint now. Yeah, without the um, approved, without this bill, which is, that's why it's so crucial to pass this bill, is that it sets the guideline or, or, or and um, it's either help people because you know, people business is cr crucial, right? Advertising is a very important part of uh, doing business. So either they can do it legally, or you know, um, they, they could be fined if they just uh, doing it illegally. And that's why this bill is responsible in that sense that it would uh, find those who are illegally just putting up signs everywhere. And and you see them already everywhere right now. Right? If you drive around, you see them. Some bigger, some smaller, but you know, basically they're illegal. Right. So, so these um, billboards that we see, for example, the Ganya intersection, the uh, advertising things that uh, don't 
belong in that building that uh, those are off-premise signs currently not allowed in Guam statute with without exception under Guam law that I can find. I'm going to try to confirm this with the Department of Public Works. And um, All right. Well, what about, so this says that um, this bill would allow these, this size for off-premise signs in commercial zones. And um, I guess, Mr. Murado, you're giving the example that all of the hotel zoned property, this would apply there also? Uh, this no. would be allowed? I, I don't believe it'll apply in the hotel zone. Um, hotel oh, okay. zones uh, have their own legislation in terms right. of advert I mean, on-premise okay. advertisement. But I don't think it'll apply to uh, Tumon. But the challenge here is, and the concern that we have in the industry, is that if we open up the, the floodgates to um, this type of sign in con commercial zones, well, it's fairly easy to make the argument uh, that hotels would make and say that, why, why can't we do it as well? And if we sure. set a precedent of every 500 feet and a precedent of 400 square foot on commercial property, well, hotels would, would want to do that as well. So you, you'd have that effort eventually. Remember, this is a law that's not temporary. So if we pass this law, it'll be permanent. And once permanent, uh, these companies are going to try to take advantage of those, those laws. Okay, sure. And thank you for bringing that point up that, that our, um, this would be maybe less restrictive than the recent law that was passed for hotel zones, right? And so my other concern with this zoning part is, so we allow this for commercial zones, but I don't know, you know, on Guam, our commercial zones are kind of, they're spotty, right? They're not uh, like a strip necessarily. Sometimes it's one commercial zone surrounded by agricultural because they've been spot zoned. And I, I guess I'm just curious how this is going to look in the villages or we are going to allow this size signs uh, in residential areas, this size signs in, in agricultural areas, that type of thing. But I, it looks to me like the bill would allow that. Do, do you think that, um, is, I guess is that's what's intended. It, do you think it's okay to have this size of a sign, a static billboard in, in a residential area? even though it's one commercial property surrounded by residential areas. Mr. Ayun, what, what do you think about that? Well, um, I mean, the, the intent is if, you know, to, put, to only target the um, commercial area. Um, of course, Guam is relatively small in proximity to everything. So there is a possibility there is a commercial area uh, land that is uh, near a residential area. But um, if you were to, it, it, on a commercial er, uh, area, you probably have all kinds of different um, uh, um, businesses that, that will be, uh, you know, utilizing the building anyway, um, such as, um, you know, it could be uh, maybe um, a restaurants or bars or anything like that. So I don't see um, that, you know, as long as we don't put a residential uh, property, you know, a R1 zone or something like that. Um, I mean, I think it should be okay. All right, but um, what about what about the structure that the signs are built on? Let's say, for example, we've seen the digital signs; those are built on on top of a platform. Would uh, this bill allow these signs to be put on top of platforms, and would that be included in the thirty foot structure? I mean, well, this is going to be this is going to be vetted by the public works, just like the same way that you know you're going to be vetted uh, if you were to build a uh, building, house, or whatever. So it, you know, public work will uh, require a professional engineering drawing showing that uh, it can withstand uh, typhoon uh, within the building zone limits, uh, earthquakes, uh, a foundation that it's sound that it will not uh, you know going to topple over. Um, and, um, you know, it takes months, uh, you know, the last time it took months for them to approve, to, to vet it through all the engineering people, as well as highway people. And um, so, you know, it's going to be structurally sound by you know, an engineer and approved that, by public works. All right. But is that a platform or, or the building part uh, included in the 30 foot? Oh, well, the foundation is underground. Um, so the 30 foot, it's um, 
you know, you calculate from ground level, right? Um, that's where the 30 foot comes from. Okay. From the ground. All right. Regardless of so it's not a pedestal and then another 30 foot. No, no. So that will exceed the 30 foot. All right. Um, we talked about, well, um, Mr. Verado brought up um, proposals as to the, the fee. And I wanted to know maybe from all those present, if you're willing to um, suggest what you believe is a fair fee to be charged for this type of permit. Oh, I, uh, I, I'm in agreement with him. A thousand dollar for the application. I think th that's a fair fee. Uh, after all, uh, we, we, we as an industry, you know, just, not just myself, I'm sure the uh, Chris and Rich and uh, everybody else here is in, a, is in agreement that um, um, the, the public work needs some funding so that, you know, there are you know, people who are trying to uh, violate, you know, the signage uh, industry and hurt our industry. I think they should be, uh, you know, brought to light and, um, you know, having some funding for them to, to do that. I mean, I totally agree with that. All right. Um, did any of you, um, Mr. Chrysostomo or Mr. Devira want to chime in on that fees or I see oh, Director Ariola is here. Welcome, Director. We're talking about, uh, there was testimony earlier that the fees should be raised uh, on the sign permits. And I was asking them uh, what they believed a fair fee would be. Thank you, Jay. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing Benson still talking. Okay, right. there. Um, there were like three people talking at the same did time. Did any of you, um, Mr. Chrysostomo <laughs> or Mr. Devira, want to chime in on that fees? Or I see oh, Director Ariola is here. Yeah, I, I, yes, I apologize for being late, there Madam was Speaker. I earlier that the fees should be raised uh, on the sign permits. And I was asking them uh, what they believed the fair fee would be. Thank you, Jim. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing Benson still talking. Okay, right. there. Um, there were like three people talking at the same did time. Did any of you, um, Mr. Chrysostomo or Mr. Devira, want to chime in on that fee? Or I see mm. Director Ariola is here. Yeah, I, yes, I apologize for being late, Madam Speaker. I was speaker. earlier that the fee should be raised uh, on the sign permit. Something's, and I was something's asking going on. Them, uh, what they believe the fair fee would be. Mr. Ariola. Can you mute mute yourself for a minute? Mute 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 yourself. Let me see what happens. Yeah, I think it's something on your end. I don't know if you're on another media. Yes, that uh, is causing that feedback, or it's kind of like uh, it's like the YouTube version is uh, delayed like that. Uh, just make sure your phones or anything else that you might be on are, are off if you were watching on YouTube. Okay. Uh, where are you? Oh, did we lose him? Okay, sorry about that. I hope he comes back. All right. Um, I wanted to ask one more question that was, oh, no, I have a couple. Well, I'm going to wait for the, the director, I guess. We'll ask the director questions after this. So I'll allow Senator Taitigui to ask questions of this panel that's in front of us now. To so just Masi, Madam Chair, for the opportunity, and thank you, everyone, for being here. It, it just... It feels like deja vu for me because just in the 35th Guam legislature, we had a couple of bills that had to deal with signage, you know, and digital. And, uh, you know, and, and we hear, I think the last bill that we passed on this was a bill that I introduced and passed into law. Uh, forget the public, uh, public law, I think it was uh, public law 35-70, yeah. And um, it was talking about the fees uh, there's Director Ariola. In fact, uh, before I go on, Madam Speaker, I want to give the opportunity, especially to Director Ariola, to um, you know talk because it's contradictive based on the BBMR um, uh, fiscal note that was provided. It stated here, according to the comments received from DPW, that DPW supports Bill 1136, and then when we receive received his letter, he was still researching and there wasn't no support, but still researching the laws and regulations that govern the highway. And I think that's important. So if I, I'll yield to the director, Madam Speaker, and we'll continue from there. 
All right. Thank you, Senator. Um, Director Ariola. thank you again for being yeah. here. If you, if you would like to testify, we read your letter earlier. Right. Right. All right. And it, it, it was just, it's basically, Madam Speaker, it's, it's basically just letting you know that we're still doing some research on it, uh, both on the engineering side, the legal side. Uh, there may be some um, what's that, MUTCD uh, issues, um, um, rights away issues that, that we're looking at, and, and I, I believe structural as well. That's a real big issue for us. Um, and so, um, you know, I don't, we, we don't have our, I, th I think in concept we'll support it, right? But with, with, a, with a number of, of, uh, of caveats to make sure that the public's protected, especially in terms of, of safety and, and uh, the, I believe I mentioned the structural soundness. Um, because if you look at it, the, the, the maximum, the way I read the bill, the maximum was uh, 400 square feet, right, per side. And then that, that would be a 20 by 20 on four sides. So that, that's a pretty decent, decent sized structure. And I know Benson was talking earlier about, uh, you know, it would, it would be designed by a, by a structural engineer and, and uh, you know, that they would have to go through the, the building permit process and things of that nature. Uh, so that, that's, that's one of the issues that, that we're looking at. Uh, the other issue is of course, a distraction. Um, I know in many counties in the States, um, if you're going to put up a billboard, I think they require like about 50 to 100 feet uh, away from from the highway, and that's just not to, that's to make sure there isn't a distraction uh, to the drivers. Because you know what what we want from our drivers is uh, on Guam anywhere is we want 100% attention to the road. Um, the billboards are are there for a purpose, of course, to attract their attention, uh, advertising notices, things of that nature, and that's fine. You know we're okay with that, but uh, our, our still our our um, our position is is driver safety and, and passenger safety, um, hands on the wheel at all times and, and paying attention to the road. So uh, we just want to make sure that that these signs don't uh, interfere with uh, the attention of the driver, because then then we'll have another problem on top of cell phones and texting and who knows what else. So you know uh, I, I I will get something to the committee. I, I, I believe hopefully by, by Wednesday at the latest, uh, we should have something uh, uh, formally transmitted to you, Madam Speaker. All right, thank you for that. So do you believe that this bill gives you authority, if this bill is passed, that it would give you authority to, um, to reject a sign that is, uh, in your opinion, causing some kind of highway safety issues? Um, I believe so. You know, as 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 the uh, as the, the the building official for for Guam, um, you know, I'm tasked with making sure that in, anything that's that's uh, that's uh, constructed, um, whether it be on private or or or, 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 or on government property, uh, uh, meets building codes, meets uh, uh, local and federal regulations. Uh, it's safe, it's sound, and, uh, you know, it doesn't distract from, uh, from drivers or, or, or the public in general. So we'll look, we'll look at all those issues. All right. Yes. I, I appreciate that because right now the bill says, uh, I think there's a limit about 10 feet away from the highways, but it doesn't mention intersections in this bill, at least it might be in another law. So I would like you to be very clear about that. And right. it does say that you can, you will approve or um, per, uh, pursuant to the requirements in this chapter. Yeah, I just, so yeah, I guess I'll, I'll wait for your testimony more, for more details on that. Yes, Is it your testimony director that currently off-premise signs are not allowed on Guam except for those that have been approved by law? Off-premise, uh, yes. All right, and um, so we saw some earlier examples of the electronic signs that have been put up and then the cube sign that has been put up. Right. Um, all right, okay, Senator Taitigui. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, Vince, hi, how are you? Hi, very good. Uh, I'll be calling you later about the abandoned vehicles shortly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I heard about that. Um, we're on your plate uh, to deal yeah. with. 
But uh, anyways, you know, and I was just mentioning about a public law that was just recently passed. It was Public Law 35-70 that actually created the Public, pu public Signage Enforcement Fund. And according to BBMAR, it's, it still has not been up you know, and uh, you know, established, I'm sorry, established by DPW. So um, I'd hate to think that, you know, this bill is intended to uh, increase, you know, economic growth by, <laughs> by uh, placing fines to put into this fund when, uh, but there are quite a bit right now of those who uh, have signs up right now that are illegal. I brought to your attention a couple of them um, I've had constituents call me about the sign uh, where the um, dry cleaners uh, uh, is located at uh, mm -hmm. in Tumuni. I, I know you did make a phone call and what they did was basically just uh, downsize that sign a downsize bit. But, it. Yeah, but the sign in the front is still like almost overtaking. And then, uh, in fact, uh, there's some pictures that were brought up uh, earlier uh, to show the signs that are on site of buildings that's obviously not in compliance with the current law. What is DPW doing about those signs that are, are obviously breaking the law? Right. Um, uh, thank you for that, Senator. Um, you know, I, I, I had a conversation with the speaker. I must have been yesterday, if not the, the day before, because she asked the very same question. And right now, it's, it's really a staffing issue. Uh, we're focusing, our inspectors are focusing more on, on, on um, inspection of construction, uh, uh, of the construction of houses, commercial buildings, uh, and things of that nature. Um, we, we, we just don't have the staff right now to do signs. You know, we, we, we can, we're, we're basically taking it on a, we're reacting. We're more reactionary than anything else. Because right now our, our priority is to do a house, house inspections, construction inspections, so that we can get the con construction moving, uh, you know, and, and finally lead to, to occupancy permits. So that's, that's really our focus right now. So you basically you're, you said you're being reactionary. So if someone right. were to call your office or send you a letter, um, you might, you then will react to some of these laws that are being broken on these signs that are going up for those who are following the law and paying their GRTs and staying within the specs that are into law. I know, I know you have a lot in your plate, Vince, but these signs have been up there for years and years, three years, in fact. That's enough time for you to take a moment, you know, to to actually uh, place those penalties. And you know, we 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 uh, what is it? Uh, solidified those laws to allow you the clear authority to implement these pen penalties in Public Law 30 uh, dash, um, 35 dash 70. So I appreciate it, Vince, and I know you have a lot on your plate, and uh, but. I guess that's what's going to take for you to be reactive by a, then I guess we'll have to send in a, a letter to you to do so. Well, yeah. Well, you know, like everyone says, you know, it, and, and in the position I'm, I'm in, it's, it just takes a, a stab in the back and, and we'll get, we'll, we'll find the time to, to move on it. Cause you know, we only have, four, we're, we're four, we've got four inspectors to do the entire Island. So, yep. you know, but uh, you're, and you're right. You know, I'm not going to deny it. You're right. You know, the law is there. I've got a, that's 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 my job. I've got to go out there and, and enforce the law. And if a sign's off, then a sign is off, and we just have to go after that yeah. business of that individual. Yeah, um, you know what? Since you're on, um, uh, uh, Mr. Morado, you you brought up earlier about um, studies and regulations. Um, can you just comment on that with, when you were talking about the studies and regulations? Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you, thank you, uh, Senator Tello. Uh, thank you. Um, it's really important. Um, what I wanted to mention, because I know Benson had brought up uh, lots of federal regulations and, and laws and, and uh, uh, samples of different states, uh, sign distances and sign sizes as well. But I'd like to also kind of point out that those reports or uh, laws that he's uh, quoting are antiquated, just like, just like the, the sign law that we have here on Guam, over 45 years old. Uh, some of the reports that he's mentioned is back in 1968, 1972. I've got here a, a report done by the uh, uh, OAA, Outdoor uh, Advertising Association of America, which um, surveyed states and gathered information regarding uh, spacing 
of both digital and static signs. And it clearly shows here in this document, and we'll provide this, this to you all. Um, we'll provide this to you all here uh, with highlighted uh, sections. Um, okay, but, but uh, the, the spacing, uh, I'll give you some examples. This is dated in 2015. This, this particular compilation is dated in March of 2015. Uh, we, now, every state has their own regulation. And this is how the United States handles sign regulation. They leave it up to the states, not necessarily that the federal government is going to come in and say, you, California, must have a size of this size or distance between signs of this size. They leave it to each individual state which we are, we are individual island that has to make this decision for ourselves, for our community and our people. I'll give you some examples. Um, Arkansas, uh, their distance between uh, any types of signs is 1,500 feet. California, 1,000 feet. Uh, Delaware, 2,500 feet. Colorado, 1,000 feet. Uh, Georgia, 5,000 feet. Kansas, 1,000 feet. Uh, Louisiana, 1,000 feet. Massachusetts, 1,000 feet. Missouri, 1,400 feet. Michigan, 1,000 feet. New Jersey, 3,000 feet. Nebraska, 5,000 feet. Montana, prohibited. Uh, Hawaii, for example, doesn't pr prohibit any types of billboards at all. So the point, that, the, the point that I'm trying to make here is that, yes, there are certain states that, yes, absolutely allow 100 foot be be between each sign. I mean, we, we know this. You can go to Times Square, New York, and you'll see, you know, displays right up against each other. You can go to Las Vegas and, and, and see uh, displays of all sizes and types and heights and, and all this. But the point being is that we have to decide as a community, as an island, what we want for our community, what we think is beneficial for our community and our, and our people. And we believe, as, lo as, as well as the majority of the industry here on Guam, we believe that 3,500 feet is the sweet spot. That would give enough room to alleviate the, the visual pollution that may be caused by these billboards. And, and believe me, senators, if we allow 500 square feet uh, between each sign, companies will take advantage of that. They just will. It's more profitable. We can make deals with landlords. And if one company does it every 500 feet, that would force the other companies to do it because of competition. Then you have a race of getting property, a race of building bigger and more bright signs all over the island. This is what we have to look out for. We have to look at the uh, unintended consequences that a, a sign law like this might 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 uh, uh, might uh, might cause, and then also um, in regards to the USS uh, C uh, uh, sign legibility uh, document that 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 uh, I had uh, shown, uh, those those recommendations are not just based on legibility. They're based on legibility and safety. That's the job of that council. So they do studies and this is what their recommendations are. Not just because you can see the character E from a certain distance or at a certain height, it's also the safety factor. There are studies that show that size does matter when it comes to safety. So we can go through all the reports uh, and, and all of that, but what we're asking is that the bill be really scrutinized perhaps added on to so that it can incorporate this data, the hard facts. Modern sign technology is safe and, and, uh, and, and, and beneficial to the community, but it must be regulated. A little history about outdoor advertising. Outdoor advertising has been, been around for, for hundreds of years. Back in the Western days when there was no, no sign laws, uh, people would put up signs on their storefronts and the governments soon, very soon realized that they have to regulate them based on their community's needs. So that's why every state has regulations 
either for or against off-premise advertising. We believe that off-premise advertising is beneficial for our island because of the benefits that it, it, it brings, but it has to be regulated. It has to be strict. And to be honest with you, it has to be very strict here on Guam because what do we rely on on Guam? It's the beauty of our island for our people and our tourists. And if we, if we ruin that with billboards, uh, we ruin lots, lots, we affect lots of people in their lives. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morado. Um, yeah, I, I didn't even come to think of it when you said Hawaii just didn't even allow any billboards or signs up. I was just trying to think in my top of my head, have you ever seen it? And you're absolutely right there, there are none in Hawaii whatsoever. And I don't, I don't even think in the outer islands there are billboards. And, and there, that's for a reason, you know, Hawaii is beautiful, it's an island. Guam is even beautiful, <laughs> more beautiful than Hawaii, I say, you know, but um, yeah, the, there is an issue. I mean, the bill to itself, you know, I, I noticed the comments that you made. I appreciate if we can get a copy, by the way, of your testimony um, so we can go through it because, you know, besides yours, I've, I've seen a lot of issues with the, the bill itself, um, especially when with the verbiage on premises versus premise, you know, there's an issue there. Um, there are other uh, it doesn't make any sense because it's in the section of political signs. I wasn't quite sure about that. Why would it be in the section of political signs um, and not uh, above that uh, where they talk about other signs? So yeah, there's a lot of issues with this the, the bill that I see, but I, I understand the intention of it, but um, I think this is, it's almost like I said, deja vu. We had the same conversation on the session floor. I think in November, 20, uh, November 27, 2019, um, it was around that time, the session during there we talked about. Then again, on May 9, 2019, when another public law came out about static signs, the extension. So a um, lot of information, but I think we're going round and round on this. Uh, if Speaking round and round, Madam Chair, um, if we want to look into something like this for our island, then maybe we should have a roundtable discussion on that and bring more people to the to the table to discuss discuss this because it's obvious um, we do not want to turn into a you know Las Vegas or or Bang let's talk about the Asian side we don't want to be Bangkok you know or places like that that have tons of signs where you can't even see a tree because it's blocked so. I appreciate it uh, for the opportunity and thank you everyone for here for testifying here today. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Brown, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I have to admit uh, the sign issue has been going on for quite some time. Um, you know, I appreciate the testimony of the DPW director, but you know, it's not like we need to pass this bill to put in place the laws and the authorities of DPW to regulate signs. Uh, we've had the ability to do that. I think it's just a question of prioritizing. While I understand there's, there's never enough personnel to do all the things we need to do with the mandates we have. Uh, but if we prioritize certain activities at certain times, even if it was one sign a week or two, um, and members of the community that are in violation of this know that there's going to be enforcement and that enforcement is consistent, uh, more than likely you'll stop having companies abuse the sign law. Uh, we see it every day on the island, especially uh, some of these advertisements. I mean, we see the one here at Chief Kapua intersection where the advertisement takes up the whole side of that, that uh, single story building that's there uh, next to the river. Uh, and that's something very visible. It's not something even hidden, but DPW has done nothing to address regulating that. Um, a number of years ago, we had even with political campaigns, I mean, some candidates couldn't get their, you know, their signs big enough. Some of them were, were tremendously dangerous when we had heavy winds, which normally always happen around campaign season, uh, because they just couldn't build the signs big enough. Uh, they, they made them bigger and bigger. And I, I do have concerns about this bill, if it's going to add to more signage blight on the side of the road. Um, we have so much modern technology now where there's so many different means of advertising that's available. And, and you know, we're communicating through one of those mediums right now uh, that allows businesses to advertise. It's not limited to just print media that they might want to put in the newspaper or other types of publications. But there's other means to get your message out there. And it doesn't necessarily involve having to put signs all over the island. 
I've been cross country three times. I've seen a substantial amount of, of what it looks like on the ground from a number of states, uh, going from the East Coast to the West Coast and back. And I've done it three times. Uh, you know, these big, huge signs that they have for advertising out on the side of the freeway, that, that's a different dynamic than a small island community that we live in. I certainly, while they're entertaining, especially sometimes they'll tell a whole story uh, as you're driving 50 to 60, sometimes 70 miles an hour reading these uh, signs. It's entertaining. Is it something I want to see on Guam? No, it's not something I want to see on Guam. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm actually pleased with, with the artists that have, have uh, been engaged in the last few years and actually... Um, you know, doing these beautiful mural paintings that we see around Guam that's really enhance uh, the visual beauty of the island as well, not just our natural beauty that the island has being in a tropical environment, but, but these murals that are not advertising anything other than, you know, uh, an artistic eye have really enhanced our community. So do I, that I prefer. Uh, advertising all over the place, I don't prefer. And, and you know, I'm sure I, I, you know, I don't disagree with Hawaii, maybe a little extreme that they don't allow it at all. Um, I think if it's done responsibly and in limited quantity, I think that's more acceptable. I don't think the public in general wants to see more advertising all over and littering the side of the road. I mean, they pretty much let their sentiments be known with regards to campaign signs. Uh, so I have reservations about this bill. Um, I think we need to be more aggressive in enforcing the sign law. Uh, if we are, I think you're going to find better compliance so that you don't have one company taking unfair advantage of the requirements and others that are complying are getting penalized because their competitor uh, is violating the law and the governor of Guam turns a blind eye once again uh, to addressing enforcement. Uh, in most cases, uh, as in the case of DPW, it already has the authority. It doesn't need this bill to facilitate that. And I hope the director of DPW will take some effort to start doing that, to start demonstrating uh, that the department is actually addressing enforcement responsibilities as the public uh, would expect. Other than that, Madam Chair, I, I, it's been an interesting discussion, but I, I don't have any further comments or questions with regards to this bill at this time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator Brown. Senator Blas, you are recognized. No questions at this time, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you. Senator Ada, you are recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I don't have any questions at this time as well. I just look forward to any markup or any uh, amendments to the bill as it may go forward. Thank you. All right, if I could ask my staff. Uh, so we saw some comparisons of 200 square feet signs and 400 square feet signs. And then we talked about off-premise signs and uh, you know, kind of how to picture these 400 square foot signs. So there's one example of it, uh, the cube in Upper Tumon above you know, the road to the Westin. But uh, if you could put up um, the, the sign at the intersection of the ITC. Yeehaw. All right. So this this they talked about earlier. I think Mr. Morado, you said this sign is less than 200 square feet, right? Yes. That All is right. Less than 200 square feet. Okay. And then the next slide. This is the cube. 400 square feet each side. Okay. Uh, next slide. Does anyone know how big this sign is? This looks like it takes up uh, one floor or more than one floor. So it's higher than 10 feet and maybe 30 feet. Is, yeah, so would this be about 400 square feet also? No, this, this would be, uh, uh, I believe, just looking at it, uh, because you, 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 can, you can kind of tell based on the format, like a HDTV format, right? So it's usually uh, uh, sized correctly for HD. So this is probably either 200 square feet or slightly above 200 square feet. Okay, next slide. Does anyone know how big this one is? This one is the 20, also 20 feet by 20 feet. So 200 square feet? No, 400, 400, 400, 400, 400 square feet. Okay, so this is another example of 400 square feet. Okay, and then the next slide I think shows the other side of this. Same, Same thing, right? Yeah. Okay, all right. And um, next slide. This is another digital sign we haven't talked about. Uh, well, well, you mentioned it, but how, what's the size of this? Do you know? Is this is 200 there? square feet. Okay, all right, next slide. What about this? 
Well, this is well over 400. <laughs> over 400, you're saying? You think? Yeah. 600. Okay, next slide. This is the same area, so it's well over 400. Okay, that same. Is yeah, that building is no longer there. Oh, yeah, that's the one they tore down. That's right. Yes. Okay, <laughs> next uh, next slide. This is the Agatnya intersection that Senator Brown was talking about. How big would you say that sign is? I would say slightly. It's also well over 400 also. Mm, it's no, a Murado, you agree with that? No, I, don't, I, don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's 400 square feet. I, I think uh, I drive by that every day. I think, yeah. I think that's uh, slightly bigger than 200 square feet, almost the same size as the other one at the dry cleaners. This is 15 by 35. 15 by 35? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, by the way, um, Director Ariola, are you familiar with this sign? Is this, a, is this an off-premise sign example, or is this an on-premise sign? And, you know, it depends how you define on-premise and off-premise. If, if that building was, say, a bar, that would be on-premise. Uh, I don't believe that building is even habitated. I, I, I don't know. I would know. I, I, I'll be honest, I don't go through a Ganya. Um, so, <laughs> to be honest, I, I've never seen that sign. Um, although I was just there the, uh, the other day, but I was on the other side of the building, so I, I, didn't, I wasn't even able to see that, that sign. But... Um, I, I, that, that looks like, like a violation. Whether All right, it's yes, on so, or off. Yeah, we would, I, I would, I would want a very, yeah, I want you, I would ask that you look at the definition of off premise in this bill. Mm -hmm. This would be a new definition, I believe, that's going to be added. So if you could sure. be very clear whether this is something enforceable and, uh, and I might ask you the same questions after, after that. Yeah. All right. And then we had one more example. This, um, these are three story. 30 feet tall buildings. So that 30 feet tall signs, this were just going, I was just trying to get perspective. All right, thanks. All right. Thank you. Uh, you can remove the slides now. Madam all right, Speaker? I wanted to thank all of you. Now I had uh, asked earlier about the fees and if I could go back to Mr. Um, De Devira. Yes. Dr. Wait, wait. Yeah, Devira. And uh, did you have any input on that or anything that we've discussed here? Um, I'm in agreement with the fees. Uh, I guess there just has to be something put together and enforceable in that part. So we're okay with it. All right. So Director Ariola, we had, uh, I think they had suggested a thousand dollar fees for this types of signs, uh, as opposed to the current $150 fee as reasonable. And I, I would like your input it doesn't have to be today, but as to what you believe fee reasonable sure. fee should be. All right, is Mr. Chrysostomo still here? Mr. Chrysostomo, did you have input as to the fees or anything else that we've discussed here? Uh, speaking of, uh, concerning the fees, we are also in agreement that um, $1,000 is, is uh, understandable for doing off-premise off signage. All right, well, it seems to me I'm, I'm just thinking of the top of my head here that uh, if we are unable to enforce signs that means we are not charging enough for the fees because uh, we don't we can't assign a person to that uh, duty but uh, anyway just something to think about Mr. Ariola and um, mm -hmm. Senator Taitiko you had a question yes Madam Speaker I was just going to ask um, with regards to the law on the size of the of the sign on a building, the sign on the building. I, I think, Mr. Murata, there was something you brought up. Um, this was something uh, brought up regarding, you can't be, uh, I think it's like one fourth of the size of the side of the building could be no bigger than the sign. Can, can you uh, elaborate on that? Do you, are you familiar with that uh, law? Yeah, sure. So the current current law, obviously, for, first and foremost, is it only uh, uh, allows for on-premise advertising, meaning uh, signs that are put on your building can only advertise companies or businesses that are tenants of that building. So uh, that's in contrary to uh, off-premise advertising, where you can put up a sign on your building and advertise uh, products or services of a company that's not uh, on uh, a tenant of that building. But also the sign clearly states that uh, these types of uh, on-premise advertising signs 
uh, must be only 10%, uh, the size of it must be 10% of the wall on which it's mounted. Now, uh, I've testified about this before. I've said I'm not a lawyer, uh, maybe not even very smart, but it seems to me 10% of, the size, uh, of the, the size of the wall on which it mount, it's mounted means the wall in which it's mounted. But companies out there, uh, such as the ITC building, uh, justify their signs um, by saying that their signs are 10% of the entire surface area of the building. Now, uh, I guess it's, it's interpretation. So they interpret that as being uh, the, the, the wall on which it's mounted is the entire surface of the building. And that's why, um, that's why they get away with, with those 400 square foot signs on those small uh, walls that they're, that they're mounted on. So nice. if you notice, yeah. So if you notice the wall itself is just as big as the, the sign and right. obviously more right. than 10 Right. And some of the the, the uh, pictures that the speaker put up there, I mean, the, this was the reason why I brought it to the uh, director of DPW, um, clearly in violation, you know, I mean, it's all of the whole entire wall, <laughs> you know, and even the section where the dry cleaner was on the second floor. I mean, that's obviously, you know, more than half uh, of the wall. So the, these are issues. And maybe um, uh, I think to clarify and to make it you know, clean cut and well, in simple terms, that 10% is meaning the side of the wall and not the whole entire building, which means we may have to amend the law, Madam Speaker, with regards to that, just to make it clear for everyone to understand what what's the intention behind it. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for that opportunity. Thank you. Um, Madam Mayor, just wanted to ask if you at, had wanted to add anything else to our conversation and otherwise, Senators, I would, I would ask um, Senator Moylan if you would like to close. Um, Madam Mayor, are you there? Would you like to say yes, something? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. You're welcome Hello. to chime in if you would like. Okay. Um, yeah. So again, um, I was able to listen to all the testimony that was given and um, we'll gather more information and bring this up to our Municipal Planning Council to see, you know, um, how they feel about it, you know, along with um, us speaking to other members in the community. Um, but um, like I said, um, so far there has been no objection. We have discussed about um, and there needing to be, you know, um, a law in place to regulate, um, you know, uh, signs because of how it's going up all over. But like, you know, like with the current signs that we have out there today, um, with the cube and the tri-vision signs and, um, you know, other digital, um, you know, I'm just very impressed how uh, they respond to, you know, um, the needs of the community whenever we need to do a public announcement or keeping the area clean. Um, a lot of places were just a jungle for a long time. And so how they've stepped up and um, they're doing things wonderfully, we greatly appreciate it. And so uh, again, thank you very much for the opportunity of letting us hear um, everyone's testimony. Um, again, um, I'll bring it up before our Municipal Planning Council. Um, at this time, there's no objection. And thank you everyone for your time being here today and sharing all that information. Sizos Masi. Sizos Masi, Mayor Rivera. Again, so thank you to senators and thanks to all of you who have testified today. Very helpful testimony. And um, Senator Moylan, I will allow you to close on the bill. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman, and uh, thank you to the panel. Uh, again, the, what this bill is about is strictly off-premise signs. And in the discussion, we, we discussed a little bit about on-premise. So just to differentiate, uh, right now, we have no law regarding off-premise signs on commercial or industrial zones. And that's why these photos were shown, the dry cleaners and the photo at the Ganya Loop. Um, but yet, you know, in, in the current law, we also have restrictions on political signs. Somehow we prioritize that before we discussed off-premise signs. And the importance of making sure we have regulations for off-premise signs, it, of course the regulations and through uh, DPW there, and to ensuring it's safely put up, but also the objective of this act is to allow additional commerce, uh, which would generate new tax revenue, 
We're talking about creating jobs and allowing additional economic activity by updating our guidelines, which has been well stated here that is needed for off-premise signs on commercial and industrial zones. So Mr. Young and Mr. Morato and Mr. Casasto and uh, Director and Mayor, I, I really appreciate all the input that, that you provided. And I think we'll probably be having further written testimony to be submitted as well. Well, one thing uh, for sure that I can say is noted here is that definitely a law needs to be play, put in place regarding off-premise signs. We don't have one now. And it, it's been well said that it's been ongoing for way too long. So I appreciate all the comments uh, provided by the panel and the time to introduce the to close on this bill. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much, Senator Moylan. There being no additional individuals to present further testimony, this committee will consider Bill 113-36 COR duly heard. Public hearing is now adjourned and the time is 4.49 p.m. Thank you.